Good evening. My next story is about the church. The church as a family. Why am I saying this? The church is also a family. And that is even the family that's supposed to show example of love. Because the one who instituted the church, let's say Jesus Christ, he is love. All that he has been preaching is that we should love one another. We should help one another. When he was leaving us on this earth during the ascension, he told the apostles that he's leaving them some people to take care of them. The needy, the orphans, the widowers, and people that are, are bound slavery, people that are oppressed. These are the people that we should help. And these are our family people that we should give them hands. But these days, what do we see in the church? The pastor in the church wants to be big because he's the only one that has been blessed. He's the one that needs to fly in a jet. He's the one that has to ride in a nice car. He's the one that should have a nice residence. Are we thinking about the poor people in the church also? Even to get a warm meal once or twice or something. We think when we pray or we think we are actually helping them in the spiritual way. So the physical way of let's say the, the, the food that they will eat, the clothes that they will wear, the shelter that they will put their heads under, it's not a problem for us. God will do that. But God doesn't do that. That is why we, the physical beings, are there. The spiritual things, the air that we breathe, the protection that we get from all the evils around us, God does it all. It is not because of our prayers. But let's ask ourselves questions. That the poor people, the sick people in the church, how do we treat them? The first people that are coming into the church, how do we treat them? We shouldn't forget that if we talk in terms of family, the church is a family. Why am I saying this? I remember one day when Jesus Christ was in the synagogue, you know, people went there and said, hey, your mother, your brothers and sisters are all out there looking for you. And this is the reply Jesus gave them. Who are my brothers, my mother and my sisters? The people that are my brothers and my sisters are the people that does the will of my father. And what is the will of God? The will of God is to love one another, to help one another, to encourage one another, to actually help the oppressed. Not that we are still going to sit the people who are suffering, who are being oppressed. We are going to sit on the people that are being oppressed too. No, if, if we do that, we are not actually being a family. And we are not also serving Christ. There are churches that the body of Christ, he did not put any barriers on it that nobody should go for it. But let's leave it for individuals. If you feel like going, you can go for it. And we shouldn't even discriminate that you, you, you don't deserve it because of something that you think you know. Because he gave his body freely for us. And so he said, I gave it to you free, so give it free. He said, this is my body and blood. And it is because of you people, that is why it has been poured for you. Do this in remembering of me. He didn't say the holy people should do it. He says all of us. And then when, when he was washing the, the feet of the apostles, Peter said, why are you doing this? So, Lord, let me do it. Say, no, if you don't let me do it, then it means this. But it was all about humbling ourselves because Christ is humble. And Peter said something when Christ said, look, I, uh, Christ, if that should be the case, then my whole body needs to be cleansed or my whole body needs to be, you know, to be bathed or something. And then Christ is like, look, the one that has already been uh, bathed or Babe, does not need any cleanse again. You know, so Christ 
His coming is not about holiness. His being on earth was not about holiness. It was about we, the people that are sinners. He came to save us. That I'm not saying that we should continue sinning, but we who are righteous should shine and let people see us and come. We should rather not repair people from coming to Christ. We should do it in a way that people will come to him. The body and blood that he gave us, his body that he gave us is not for any other person, but for all of us. So we should stop discrimination. We should stop the divisions. This can take it and who can take it and who cannot take it. Because I am not righteous. So if I'm going for the body of Christ, I say, Lord, I'm not ready to receive you. But you only say a word, my soul shall be healed. It's all from him. It's not from me. It's not from you. So I am saying this because something is pressing me to say it. If somebody hears it and, and they understand, that is fine. If you don't because you think you know Christ and you think you are the perfect person, you are the holy person and you think you're the only one that can take it or you should take it, it's up to you. But I, I want all of us to know that the body of Christ it's not for anybody to say you can take it or you cannot take it. We are so lucky that God does not belong to one person. Especially the Catholic Church is not for any other person, but it's for the whole world. Whoever believes in Christ is, it, it can be a Catholic or can be in the Catholic Church. It is not all of us that goes into the church that will be saved. We know that from God. Or from Christ that we should go to all the ends of the world and preach the good news it is not only in the church Paul got his uh, 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 his, his, his change or uh, uh, Paul got his uh, 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 a, 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 being a Christian when he was actually traveling he got chained when he was sitting on the donkey and traveling to go and even kill the Christian somewhere. That is where God appeared to him. It is not only in the church, but sometimes when somebody knows that the church is where uh, uh, God lives, yes, and he is going there, he is coming to him. Let's welcome him. Let's make him feel at home. Instead of using our own knowledge because we are clever, to despair the person from coming to church or to make him feel at home that he has come to Christ. And when you come to Christ, that is where the happiness are. Let's show people like that. We see people and because they look ratchet, we see people because they don't, they are not, they are not rich or something. We don't even go and say, hello, you're welcome. Is this your first time? And today is the first time that I'm meeting you. How are you? And make them feel at home. And there was this drug addict who one day said, oh, no, today I will go to church because today is Christmas and I want to give myself to God. And when he came, nobody embraced this person. But when he's out there with the drug addicts, when they see themselves, they embrace one another. They, they, they pat one another and they ask, my brother, how are you? And so if they have anything, they share it in common. Now they think when they are coming to Christ, they are going to receive more. They are going to be welcomed and they will feel happy. And then they will know that, yes, this is the place that I am supposed to go. But because they came and nobody received them, they went back to the place where they were all you know, being addicts and then smoking and drinking and all that. Because they were not welcomed. We should all know that Christ said, He's going to ask people's blood from us if they are doing something which is not good and we don't actually approach them and then maybe in a humble way try to educate them one way or the other. Or if ourselves don't radiate the goodness of him, if we don't show the light that he has given us for people to come to us, then we know that we have an answer to give. We should stop boasting that we are Christians, but we need to do the right thing as a Christian should do. We should behave like a good family from God, from Christ, 
so that people will come to him. We should stop discrimination. I'm asking you, if you're listening to me, that, you know what? The sick people, the poor people, the imaginaries in the church are also very important. It's not only the priests, the pastors, the elders, the whoever is in the church, they are the important people. You, the pastor, you, the elders, you are supposed to lead us and show us a good example. You're not just there for, for their sake. No. I hope you're not going to be angry, but you listen from a good ear, from a good side of your ear. Let's love one another. That is what Christ wants us to do. Let's show love to one another, especially the first uh, uh, people that are coming. The first people that are coming to see Christ, let them see Christ. If you are his follower, if you are the right person to direct them, if you are the, the leader of the church, you have, you have a lot of responsibilities on your plate. Thank you.